Good morning, folks. We've got some really interesting stuff today for the solstice. Top science, a mystery and something potentially unbelievable, and a look at Earth and Sun events. We're starting with our star, where the last day saw one M-class flare and several C-class events. None was strong enough to release significant plasma. The coronal holes are crossing through center disk, this last one having the best chance to impact geospace solar wind, which would likely happen on Friday. We'll switch from ionized iron to ionized helium to confirm that the flashing at the active regions didn't loose any CMEs into space. There was one off the north, which was a plasma filament. The big sunspots on the north will face Earth tomorrow, and we will have eyes on those. But right now, we've got to go to Soho, the coronagraph, where many of you noticed the object appearing to move at the sun and then turn around and run away. It's near the top left of the blocking disk, and clearly something comes in and then goes out. To be honest, there are really only three explanations I can think of for this one, and I admit, the first thing that comes to mind is, well something out of the History Channel. In today's second video coming this afternoon, we will go deeper into the options that come to mind, with one being much scarier than it being a UFO and aliens. Folks, the aftershocks near and close by to the 6.4 California earthquake we reported yesterday have been prolific. At least two deaths are now confirmed from the event. Hopefully, we don't have more coming. Moving on to the articles, we've got a major study on the cardiovascular risk presented by heat waves versus cold waves. While both are shown to have negative effects on the body, it won't shock most of you observers to discover that their conclusion is that cold is the scarier one for blood pressure and overall heart risk. Fun to read with the Arctic blast coming to the USA this week. Another paper here looking at 60,000 years of Southern Ocean and Australian eco data has several charts where you can see the 12,000 and 6,000 year cycle events. I'm just going to show one here. Look at the dip at 12,000 years, the bump at 24,000 years, the dip at 36,000 years, and the bump at 48,000 years. Not only do we see the deviation in the curve on the 12,000 year cycle, but how do you get them going opposite ways? Dip, bump, dip, bump, every cycle when it's the same event. Well, that would only happen if the location being studied went back and forth between different latitudes, the crustal shift. If you caught last night's video, I may be smiling and smile a couple of times in the video, but it was a bit of a spanking. There's one message overall. The earth and sun are about to turn on us, and it's going to be rough. If you can't take the time to watch the earth disaster playlist, then your level of caring and your actual chances of making it through this event are nil. There is a lot, but it's worth it, and it's needed for you to deal with what's coming. Make a behavioral change now. If you haven't seen it, we will be in Cheyenne, Wyoming for our January event to kick off the new year. Link to tickets is below. Space is limited. And yes, at these events, you can ask pretty much anything you want. Can't wait to see some of you out there. We greatly appreciate your support. Link for the tickets and much more found in the description box below the video. Come back later today for the mystery space object discussion. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.